And I see that we got the live button going. So we'd like to remind people that are watching this a little bit later to go to our website at lyitl.org for lovingthelord.org. You can find all of our past uh, sermons on there. A lot of information. If you're interested in preparing for the future for maybe even eternity, there's there's some things like the Romans Road on there that we encourage you to go to. There's nothing more important today than making sure that you know that you're saved 1 John 5, 13, and making sure that your family knows. Don't just take it for granted, all right? So, Catherine, we're glad to have you on here. So we're going to get started this morning. We're in the book of Philippians. Now, this is known as the happy book because it's all talking about what? Rejoicing, rejoicing, rejoicing. And uh, we were asking our congregation today, what, what, what do you have to be thankful for? And, of course, first thing out of their mouth was, it's not freezing, and uh, so we're, we're so glad to have you here. So turn to Philippians chapter 3. I, I want to talk to you about running for the prize, okay? And, but I don't want to just preach just any old sermon. I really want to preach in a way that it reaches to your heart like it does mine. And I, I hope that, that, that there's, when you join us in our services uh, live, we're so glad to have all of you here. And those that are on Facebook watching live, uh, you have no idea what a role that you're playing in the ministry of Jesus Christ. And we want to thank you for encouraging my heart and our congregation by joining us. I appreciate, uh, Lupe, all of you guys being here and doing what you do every week, being faithful. And, and I, I don't hardly mention this a lot, but I want to thank you for all of you that not only attend, but you also care about this, about the ministry that's, that's offered here. For those of you that help support this ministry through tithes and offerings, and uh, you can do that even through our website. There's a, there's a donation button on there. We don't ask for donations, but some people say, hey, we really we're getting something out of what you're doing and we really appreciate you preaching the word of God the way you do and uh, we're growing because of it so if God lays on your heart and you'd like to do that uh, God will bless you for that all right turn to Philippians chapter 3 uh, we're going to begin in verse number 12 and uh, we know that as we were talking uh, uh, last week that you know Christ was the object was the object of the believer's faith. We know that. It was also the object of our desire, and it was also the object of our expectation. That's important. You see, I believe that, that uh, we're warring against a lot of legalism today, and that legalism is affecting all of us. I, I can't believe what I'm seeing uh, coming through you know, the legal standards of today. Uh, I, I'm just going to be outspoken. I know that uh, they're trying to tell the preachers to hush up, not talk and everything else. But can I, I just want to say one thing. It's not part of the message, but I just want to get it out there. I don't think today that a three-year-old should have the ability to choose their gender. Okay? And so I'm not trying to make you mad. I'm just saying it, it just doesn't make sense anymore. It's like our world's gone nuts. Does that make sense? So uh, I just want to, I want you to think about the world in which we live today and why this message is so important. Because we are running for the prize, all right? There are two basic statements that every growing Christian in this room and those that are joining us now uh, will have to agree with. There are certain things that you and I need to agree. There's a right and there's a, a wrong. Okay, there's God's way and there's man's way. All right. And we know that that God's way is not the way of man, nor is the way of man, the way of God. All right. So we have to come, Brother James, to a place where we're, we're going to take and decide. Uh, am I just going to sit back and watch the world fall apart? Or am I going to do what I can to help reach a world with, for Jesus Christ so that that person doesn't fall apart? I may not be able to take and change the world but I can change one at a time, all right? So we're running for a race. Now, why? You're running because time's running out, okay? But uh, here in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, listen to what he says. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect or mature, all right? But I, here it is, but I follow after, and look what he says, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus, okay? In other words, he's got a goal, he's got a reason, and we know that, that part of that, Christ is the object of the believer's desire, 
And, and yet, because he's the object, we're going to rely on him. Patrick, we're glad to have you. We're in Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 16. And, and so he says in verse 13, but watch this. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Look at this. Or to have achieved. He said, but this one thing I do. Underline that. I think it's very important, Loopy, today that we get very laser focused on our Christianity on what we stand for, what we represent, who we represent. He says, this one thing I do. He got laser focused. And what did he do in order that he might be able to what? To keep Christ as the object of his desire and his goal in life. He says, forgetting, underline that, forgetting those things which are behind. Number two, Victoria, reaching forth unto those things which are before and then verse 14, I press toward the mark or the goal. Now look at this. For what? For the prize of the what? That's what I want to focus on today. Not just a prize, but the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So uh, I'm going to share two basic statements with you today. Uh, the fact is, like Paul said, we have all failed in the past. Amen. All right, and that's why we have fallen short of the of God's goals in our life. And there's a lot of people that's had the wind knocked out of them. There's a lot of people today that that have just they, they just say, "I just want to breathe again." You know, I, I noticed that right now everybody uh, we've gone through a pandemic. I got that. I, I know that there, there, the big issue was people didn't want to wear masks. Now they're griping because they're not wearing masks. And, and what, what, what do you learn from that? You're not going to please everybody. You're just not. And so you say, preacher, what's the solution? Hey, let your heart and mind be guided by the Word of God. Follow your own convictions, okay? Dr find out what those convictions are. Are they based on man's convictions or are they based on the convictions that would come from God? All right. So, so here we are in these crazy times to where we talked about that, you know, people are talking about letting children decide. And, and listen, just let kids be kids, okay? Give them a Tonka truck. Go out there and give them a G.I. Joe or something to play with or a Barbie doll or, you know, let, let them get out there and dig in the dirt. But yet, look at what our children are having to face today. If there's ever a time as we as Christians need to define what we are, who we are, why we are who we are, and what we believe is today because the generations below us, they need us now more than ever. And our convictions is what they're going to see. Uh, we've got a lot of churches right now that have dwindled way down. And then people were afraid to go to church. People were afraid to get involved. People were afraid to, uh, to interact. And what I've noticed as a pastor, have you noticed this when you, when you go out shopping, that people today, that they're not just smiling real big anymore. They're, they're very reserved. They're very, uh, they've lost a lot of their identity. And I think it's important that we as Christians remember our identity, that we are not just human beings. But we are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are the children of God. And not only that, but we are the warriors of God today. And there's going to be some battles coming up. So this is, this is very, very important that we understand that if we're going to run for the prize, we have all failed in the past. That is why we've fallen short of, of, of uh, God's goals for our lives. Uh, back before the pandemic hit, man, we had we were challenging people to come out in the ministry, knock doors, and visit, and help repairs at the church, and and help us with the music ministry, and 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 out front. And boy, everybody was just it thing was just kind of buzzing. Then all of a sudden, the pandemic hit, and then everybody kind of got used to what not being so involved, and we we've kind of lost that 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 desire to run for the glory of God. Uh, a lot of people, I, I talked to a person the other day, I was shocked. Uh, ever since the pandemic back in March of last year, they have not left their home. They're still in their home. They don't even go outside in the sunshine in their backyard. And so what are you saying? I'm saying that, guys, there's got to be some common sense nowadays, right? But it's got to come with conviction, conviction. So number one, we've all failed in the past. And, and, and yet number two we are dissatisfied with the present 
spiritual state. We are dissatisfied. We wish our churches had more people. We wish that we had uh, more members. We wish we had more teachers. We wish we had bus drivers. We wish we had, we wish we had, we wish we had. But the fact is we, we have those. But it's going to take people stepping up and saying, Hi, G, I'm glad to have you. Starla, glad to have you. But we're in Philippians chap- chapter 3. And, and listen, running for the race, not walking for the race, not standing still, but running. If there's ever a time that you and I need to put our running gear on for Jesus Christ, it's now. We are running out of time, out of time in this world. The world's going nuts. Would you agree? That, I mean, there's no common sense out there. So where do, we, where do we draw the line? We go back to the Word of God. That's where we build the foundation. I know that Brother James, don't mind me sharing, Brother James had a lot of chickens the other day. And, and something got into his chicken coop and killed all of his chickens. And I said, well, what did you learn from that? He said, I, I need to build a better coop. Right? One that's solid. Well, I think that's true today in our lives and in our churches. We, we need to be careful that, that we don't let down the barriers. That, and those barriers are the standards of God. The standards of God for you and for me. Uh, when you think about Hebrews 10, 25, uh, it says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another as so much more as you see that day approaching. Does that make sense? So here's the deal. You say, well, well that's just Scripture. No, God's saying, Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Because when you quit getting together, you begin to lose your identity even as a group. Does that make sense? So it's important that you and I do what we can to get together. It's important we do what we can to get into the Word of God together. We read it, we teach it, we preach it, we understand it, but it's more important that we apply it. Does that make sense? So it's one thing to go hear a preacher preach. It's another thing to take the Word of God that was preached and say, that's from God for my life. I need to apply that. So let me go a little farther here. Uh, that's why I want to become more like the Lord uh, Jesus Christ in my life, uh, especially now more than ever. Why? Because, uh, Brother James, I, I say it again, I'm, I'm fixed to be 64. And uh, I realize that, hey, uh, if I live to be 70, that doesn't give me a lot left. Does that make sense? I plan to live to be 100. All right, you're gonna say, "Oh my gosh, God, don't don't keep him around that long, right?" But uh, but I, I want to get, I want to live as long as I can and do as much as I can, but to do for the Lord Jesus Christ. But if I'm doing it from my flesh, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna need the Holy Spirit of God and the Word of God to guide me and help me and to encourage me. And, and there's got to be a goal. That goal, like Paul says, he's I haven't apprehended it yet. And what was he trying to apprehend? He said, here's what, he said, I want to be like Jesus Christ. I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. How many would agree that as a Christian, hey, Wayne, glad to have you. Hey, you're not there yet, but you're still working on it. Remember that old song, uh, you know, that we used to sing and everything? He's still working on me. You remember that old song? Well, it's like today. Listen, I hope and pray that, you, that your, 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 your love for Jesus is getting stronger than it was back, even back in March of last year. I hope that, that through what we've been through, it's caused us to appreciate the little things like getting together, the little things like singing songs. We're praying now that God would send us somebody that knows how to play the piano. You say, uh, you know, most churches have that. Well, we don't have that. We would love to have a piano player. So what are you doing? I'm asking God to send somebody who loves to minister through music, not just a piano player, but a minister of music that, that loves to, to sing and, and encourage people and guide people. We're doing the same thing. We need more teachers. I got that. But we don't just need somebody to go back there and babysit. We need somebody that is a minister of Jesus that loves to present the Word of God to every age group. Does that make sense? So we're looking for people that realize they don't want to just attend. They want to run the race, all right? Whether you know it or not, if you get to a place where you think you've arrived spiritually, then you'll cease to grow in the Lord. Listen, I've been in this thing for a long time. I've been pastoring here. Uh, I think I, yeah, it was 1986 when I came. And, uh, and I'm telling you, I'm still growing. I still have a need for growth. 
And I can't grow if I don't study the Word of God. I can't grow if I don't develop a real strong prayer life with the Lord Jesus Christ. So what it is, you become stagnant. Why? Because he said you got to run the race. Now, how many have ever ran a race before? You ever ran a race? I used to run the 100-yard dash, and then I used to run, you know, the quarter mile. And, and, and today, all I can do is think about doing those things. But, uh, uh, but I'm telling you, I can remember a time when I used to run so fast, and you never look back. Because if you look back, it slows you down. Does that make sense? But I can always tell when somebody got right beside me, and boy, I had to pour the heat on. I had to run so hard that my heart was about to explode. Why? Because I wanted to finish the race. All right, And I knew if I didn't do what the coach told me to do, that it would cause me to lose my momentum. Well, I want to take that scenario today and, and let Coach Jesus, our Christ Jesus, Coach Jesus, that says, Don't, like Paul, I, I'm not going to look behind. I'm letting that go. I'm going to look forward. I'm going to run the race. All right, I want to be more like Jesus today, even though I haven't been, but I want to be right here and right now. I'm starting over today. Maybe that's where we're at today. We've gotten a little bit relaxed because of the pandemic and all the things, and the things that caused people to stay home. And now people are starting to get out and people are starting to get excited. And, and But it's not about just, just experiencing the freedom that we want to feel, but we still got to be responsible. I've got that. But at the same time, I, we can't let something, let the world around us keep us from living for Jesus Christ. There's a responsibility there. There are souls that are dependent. Listen, we're in a, in a hell-bound world. Every, everything is hell-bound because of Adam and Eve. And that's why Jesus wanted to make disciples to go out to carry the Word of God so that people could hear the real Word of God, understand that it's Jesus Christ plus nothing, minus nothing. You need Jesus in your life, right? And you can have that by simply asking Him into your heart. So that's, that was what the Great Commission in Matthew 28 was all about. 19 through 20. What? To go out and make disciples and, and, and commission them to go into the world. So the question is, is it time? Is it time now that things are opening back up that we get back in the race? We get back to knocking the doors. We get back into inviting people. We get back and start taking our, our, our relationship with Jesus Christ so serious that, like Paul, it becomes the priority in our lives. Is Jesus the priority in your life? I want you to think about that question before you answer it. Uh, by the same token, when we're willing to admit that there are areas where we need to grow. That's a sign of maturing. That's why Paul says, uh, he says, to perfect or to mature. The question is, you know, we, we've got a lot of Christians throughout the years that, that they get saved, they come in, but they never mature. That's why Paul says, he says, you know, I, I, I can only give you the milk of the Lord. I can't give you the meat. You're, you're babies. You're going to get mad. You're going to get offended. Listen, if we're going to do anything great for the Lord Jesus Christ, we got to change our mindset. we got to decide, I need to mature in some of these areas. And I need to run the race with all I've got. So in these verses, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 through 16, now look what he says in, again, Philippians chapter 3. And I want you to look at that. In verse 14, he says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of what? of Christ Jesus. But look in verse 15. Let us therefore, as many as be what? Perfect. He means we're maturing. To perfect means I'm, I'm trying to become more like Jesus Christ. All right? In every area. He says, be what? Thus minded. So guess where it starts? Brother James, you're talking about that chicken pen. It starts with a great foundation. I mean, what good is the pen if, if you got a foundation that won't keep you know, the dogs out? Right? And so he says, but thus minded. Now beside that, put Romans 12, 1 and 2. Why? Because I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, except unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, be not what? Conform to this world, but be a transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you and I don't get the right mindset that we're here to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, we'll never do it. How many of you have ever got, got a bunch of honeydews still ready to be done around the house, right? We do too hit the church. We do too. But unless you've got someone willing to do them, 
it's not going to be, do any good to make a list of it, right? So here's the deal. We got to get li- you know, right-minded. If we're, if we're going to maintain a ministry, there's things that have to be done. If you're going to maintain your house, there's things that got to be done. I was looking around my house the other day, and I've got some windows that need to be painted about two years ago, right? And I didn't paint them. I got lazy. I got distracted. And I went back the other day, and wind's blowing really hard. The air's coming in the window. I'm going, well, that window's rotting out. Because I didn't take care of it when I was supposed to, I'm losing that window. Now think about that. If you're not doing the things you're supposed to for your family, you could lose your mate. You could lose your, you could lose your kids. You could lose a home. And, and, and you say, what are you saying? Maintenance is everything. But preparing is, is up front. Getting the right foundation is everything too. We could, I'd rather take and fix it right the first time, right? But he says this in verse 14, I press toward the mark for the prize, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That high calling, that's what I'm after, right? And he says, verse 15, let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if any in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. You know, there comes a time when God has to remind us that we're not thinking right. We're not doing right. And when God's doing that, he's trying to help you to realign your life. You say, what's my goal? Well, I'm a pastor of a church. That's not my goal. My goal is to be more like Jesus Christ. And I want to be more like Jesus Christ as I pastor. I want to be more like Jesus Christ as I minister. I want to be more like Jesus Christ even to my wife and my family and to my friends and to all of you. That's my goal. That's my high calling. So somebody said, well, did God call you to preach? No, God called me to surrender my life fully to Jesus Christ. And in that calling uh, for that full surrender is I'm following the high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. So whatever he has me do, I don't complain about it. I'll just do it. Why? Because I'm not here just to pastor a church. I'm here to what? to be, try to become more like Jesus Christ in all that I do. I want to live for him, all right? So he says, I press, he says, I, look at that in verse 14, full responsibility. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. Now look down here in verse 16. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. There it is. Let us live our life or walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same Thing. In other words, we need to get everybody on the same page, and it can't be that I'm reading from one book and you're reading from another. We're going to read from God's book, amen? We're not going to go by some man's thoughts about something, we're going to go by what God's thoughts are. So in other words, we're going to let Scripture interpret Scripture. There are so many that will take one verse of the loopy and just go completely outside of what God intended it to be. I tell people, if it doesn't make sense, read the verse before it and after it. If that doesn't work, then go back and read the 10 verses before it and 10 verses after. If that doesn't work, read the whole chapter. If that doesn't work, read that whole entire book, like the book of Romans. I love the book of Romans, and I love the book of Philippians because of how it deals with with the heart and it deals with perspective listen we're not here to build a big building we're here to reach people so that God can fill it up with people that love him want to learn from him want to serve him so this this is just a tool the ministry is not this building but if we don't take care of it guess what's going to happen we're going to lose it right same way here what about your health if you don't take care of your health you're going to eventually what? Lose it. Now, somebody's going to say something about my hair, but I did my best, okay, to take care of it. But here's the deal. First of all, number one on your outline, in verses 12 and 13, this was Paul's examination. Think of all the reasons that Paul had to stick out his chest and crow about the Christian life, to brag about the Christian life. Uh, he had been hand Number one, Paul, uh, Victoria, was handpicked uh, to be an apostle to the Gentiles by Jesus Christ. That's something to brag about. Did you get that? And you think it's any accident that you guys are, are part of this ministry? God, listen, we didn't go out and find you. God brought you in. Why? You were handpicked. Are you getting that? In fact, the very people that invited you to this church, Brother James, they don't go here anymore. But that was God. Look, where, look what you guys are doing now. Look at the role you play. Doesn't think about that. 
You know, did, did anybody go out there and duct tape you and bring you in? No, but you get. And, and he comes now, brings his children. And, and, and why? Because of the value of what he's getting from the messages. Because that's God speaking to him. Does that make sense? And he's growing. And, and that's the same with you. It's like Michaela. Michaela used to come when she was in diapers. Now she's got two with diapers. And, and uh, you know, but you say, why are they still coming? Because of the value that they get from what God is doing. But they were called. They were commissioned by him. That's something to brag about. Amen. And so God was using Paul to record the inspired words. You know that Paul wrote, or was, or had, it was dictated to him, but he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. A lot of that was while he was in prison. Isn't that amazing? But he's got a lot of reasons to brag. Hey, God used me to, to write the very uh, part of the Bible that you guys are studying today, like we're doing here. And he was a tremendous soul winner. He had a lot to brag about. And he was a preacher of the word. I, I told our congregation, hi, Les, glad to have you. Uh, I, I told anybody here, hi, Maddie, come on in. I, I think it'd be wonderful if we had a preaching day again. When I was in the ministry, we would pick out one Sunday a month and we would have dinner. And then anybody that wanted to preach would get up and they would time you. We got, we got 15 minutes, and all those young preachers, man, we couldn't wait. We got up there, and boy, we just, whoa, we preached, and then we get down. Somebody else would come up and preach, and it was just a preaching day. But when you walked away, it's like, wow, man, there's a lot more than just hearing a sermon. It's one thing to experience a sermon. It's another thing to experience a day of sermons. Amen. All right? So, but also Paul had a lot to brag about. He was handpicked by Jesus Christ to be an apostle. And to, to be an apostle, you had to have met the Lord Jesus Christ before he died. Or after he died, you had to physically meet him. All right? So he had a lot to brag about. And so think about it. You've got a lot to brag about. Look where you are in your life. It seemed that Paul had all of his ducks in a row and was making the, the, the grade for Jesus. You would think that, right? But if anyone looked at his life would have concluded, they say, well, man, Paul's arrived. He's got it all figured out. But what did Paul do? Paul just simply knew the truth. And so, uh, Maddie, we're in Philippians chapter 3. So good to see you. We're talking about running for the prize. All right? So, uh, so what, what was he trying to do? P Paul was trying to perfect his Christ-likeness. Did you get that? He's trying to perfect his Christ-likeness in spite of his flesh, right? So Paul's response, his response to his own life was a mark of spiritual growth. He knew he needed to be more like Christ. There were areas in his life that uh, Lady Carol, that he just needed to step it up, right? So think about what he said. Beware of those people who think they've arrived. You ever met somebody who thinks they know it all? You know, I, I, I'm sure none of y'all don't know anybody like that, right? Or you've met somebody in the ministry that thinks they've got the Word of God completely figured out. They're right. You know, I, I was watching Mark Lowry. I started watching him again recently on some of his stuff. And he was at, at this opera house. And, and he said, how many Baptists do we have here? And boy, they all holler. How many Presbyterians? Oh, how many Methodists? Oh. And he said, how many Latter-day Saints? They went, oh. And they had all these different denominations. Can you believe this? All these different denominations under one roof and nobody's fighting. But he says, now, how many of you don't go to church? He says, now, be careful because the Baptist will hunt you down. All right? <laughs> and, then, and he said, that we'll pick a fight somehow. No, but, but the fact is, wouldn't it be great if we understand it's not about denominations. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I don't care what church you go to. I don't care if it's pink, purple, whatever the color of it is. I don't care what the sign is out there. You know, uh, uh, you know, the first church of the squirrel, whatever it is, you know. But the fact is, they're people. And, and the only thing we need to do is if everybody would get back to the Bible. And I like what Mark Lowry said. Think about it. All of you denominations that are here, one of you is wrong. And it got a roar of laughter. Okay. I'll tell you right now, we're all wrong in so many ways. The only one that's right is Jesus Christ. And the only thing we do is follow his book because that's what's right. My interpretation could make it wrong. So what do you do? I stick to scripture to let scripture interpret scripture so that I stay out of the way. All right? So that's what Paul's talking about here. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Galatians 6, 3. For if a man think himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. You see, I'm just a sinner. 
that's been saved by the beautiful grace and the love and the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, and that's, and like I said last week, people always ask, Preacher, how come you always take your name off of the church sign? Well, if I'm going to put my name up there. I might as well put all of y'all's. This is not my church. It's his church. In fact, we all put down there, who's the pastor? Jesus Christ. Uh, that, then people will probably say, oh, the pastor thinks he's Jesus Christ. You know? But no, I want to be more like Jesus. So this is not my church, but, I'm, but God brought me here like he did you. And let's, you know, I'm responsible, and so are you. So if we're all, in a sense, like pastors and preachers and teachers, then the same responsibilities that I have to this ministry is the same responsibilities that you have. Can I get an amen out of that? I, I don't mean to milk the cow too much here, but we're trying to trying to get us all. Amen just means you're right. I, I agree with this. So be it. That's what amen means, all right? So, but we've not reached that perfection yet. And, and, and but we will one day, right? So Paul realizes that he's not perfect, but he is not content to be to let that state he's in now to keep him from to make him sit still. In other words, he's not perfect, but he said, I'm not going to get lukewarm here. I have got to do more for Jesus Christ. He had something to stick his chest out about, right? But yet, he knew that in order to bring the right glory to Jesus Christ, there had to be some changes in his own personal life. What about you? Are there some changes? Maybe you, you, we've gotten a little bit slack on our Bible studies. We've gotten a little slack on, on maybe our church attendance. We've gotten a little bit slack on, on, on maybe sitting down with our mates and opening the Word of God together. I know we, we get so far behind. And, and, but like I said, a lot of times Lady Karen, she, she takes care of the children for us in the church. So late at night, uh, we'll go back and listen to the sermon. I get to hear myself preach and say, man, I could have done better. You know, and uh, but Lady Karen gets to hear it, and, and others on like Wayne and Les and, and those and Catherine, those that are on here and Starla and many others that they can go back and listen and even share it. Maybe we've gotten a little bit lax on sharing the word with people, you know. And, and so once again, it's not a matter is if you will fail. The fact is, it's when you will fail. I'm going to fail, and so are you. But there's got to be something that when I fail, that uh, Lady Carol, that I can say, if I get back to the Word of God, He'll put me back on track. Does that make sense? So I challenge you this month, for the rest of this month, uh, try, try to devote 30 minutes a day throughout the whole day, just maybe 10 here, 10 here, 30 minutes a day of reading the book of Philippians. All right? All right. So here, once again, Paul's examination. He examined himself. Instead of trying to examine everybody else, examine yourself. What do I need to do to grow? Number two, Paul's ex, uh, exertion, all right? And, in fact, in verses uh, 12, 13, and 14, he says, once again, he says, uh, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended or arrived, right? But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before, and pressing toward the mark or the goal for the prize of the what? The high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So these verses are, are, are what are known as action terms. Action terms, okay? Uh, notice the five great statements made by the apostle. First of all, in verse 12, what did he say? I follow. Do you get that? Literally, to run swiftly in order to catch a person or a thing. That's what the word follow means. It means I am running as hard as I can to Jesus Christ, to be like Jesus Christ, to be effective for Christ. He says, I follow. I'm going to run with everything I've got. So it, it, it's a reference to a hunter pursuing his prey. It's also the idea of, of a runner chasing the fish line, trying to catch a fish, right? But in other words, it's a picture of pursuit. Now, Paul is what is hoping of apprehending. Now, what does the word apprehend mean? Okay, if a police officer is chasing you and he apprehends you, what does he do? He lays his hands on you, all right? So Paul says, I have not apprehended you. I have not laid my hands on Christ yet. I'm chasing that goal, right? So I'm pursuing the goal of laying hold on all that Christ laid hold on me. Whatever Christ 
apprehended in me. Now I need to take that and apprehend it for Christ. I need to lay hold on it. So if God's got, gave you the ability to play the piano, do it for Jesus. Amen. If God's given you the ability to teach or preach, do it for Jesus. Amen. If God gave you the ability to, to work with electricity, I know he did you and you with plumbing and everything and, and all you guys and woodwork. Listen, don't just do it for a living. Find a way to, to do part of it to bring glory and honor to Jesus Christ. Amen. And we can do that a lot of times through the ministry. The ministry is an open door of opportunities. So once again, Paul was well, the hope of apprehending. That means to lay hold on. So write that in your Bible. Lay hold on. All right. So Paul said, I am pursuing the goal of laying hold on all that Jesus Christ laid hold on me. So if Jesus grabbed your heart, then grab his heart. If Jesus grabbed your hands, then get a hold of his hands. Does that make sense? What are you saying? I'll, in other words, become a mirror image of Jesus Christ with his help and his guidance. So he realized he had, he had been saved for a purpose. Saved for a purpose. And that God had a plan for his life. I want you to realize, Maddie, God saved you for a purpose. And whether you know it or not, God still has a plan for your life. Does that make sense? For all of us. All right. And, and so, so, so that question is, what are you doing about what God saved you for? Many of us are stuck on salvation. We got saved and now we're stuck. We're not serving. We're stuck. You getting what I'm saying? You can say, oh, me now. That's not an amen. That's oh, me. Right. We're stuck. So, so, so what are you doing about what God saved you for? So in verse 13, Paul says this, the one thing I do. And this was just like an Olympian athlete, all right? Paul specialized. Now, I want you to write, write the word specialized that beside that verse. Paul specialized on one thing. What was it? Reaching the goal. Reaching the goal. Notice that what he do? He, he left his past behind. He specialized in that. He reached for the future, and he was a man that excels when he specializes. Listen, when you decide to move forward in your business or in your life or in your Christianity, it's when you specialize on it, all right? So notice that he left the past behind him and reached for the future. And then he said, I'm going to be a special, I'm going to, I'm going to do the, I'm going to be the best I can be. That's a specialist, all right? So if you want to know the secret of Paul's success, it was that Paul had a one-track mind. He had a one-track mind. Nothing was as important to him as pleasing the Lord. And we're going to do part two of this tonight because we're, we're out of time. But once again, it's not about getting through a chapter. It's about getting something out of that chapter. Does that make sense? So one preacher told me one time, he said, the mind can only handle what the posterior can endure. Some of you will grab that today. Okay. So I, I don't want to bore you. And I want to tempt you and get you encouraged and say, y'all want to get the next part of this message tonight. So if you can't be here in person, come on, get online at Central Time. At, we, we meet at 6 o'clock here at our church. We have a little singing and fellowship and coffee, whatever. But at 6.15, we start on time. And, and we do about 40 to 45 minutes. It's a real Bible study. So it's not about just hearing somebody preach. You go, amen, hallelujah, and walk out of here, and that's all it was. It's, like, it's kind of like a balloon. <sniffs> Fill it up, <sniffs> gone. We don't want to have that kind of preaching. We want to have one that fills you up. One that says, I need to think about this. I have something to brag about. The Lord Jesus Christ not only saved me, but he's changing my mind and my heart. There's things that I could do for him. But I've been sitting on my salvation. Somebody say, oh me. Right? So what's the chapter about? Philippians 3, 12 through 16. Running for the prize. I've got to get it in gear. If I'm going to win this race, I can't sit down anymore. There are people that there's souls that need to be saved. There's people that lives have been falling apart and we've got to reach them. That means this, these are action words, action words. I do. He says in verse 13, I do, forgetting the, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, that's action, reaching forth unto those things which are before, that's action. And he said, I press toward the mark. He said, I'm giving it, I'm going to give it 100%. I'm going to give it everything I got to the goal. The goal to what? To apprehend Christ, to be like Christ, 
and let God use him in a mighty way. So if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, because I'm out of time right now. I told you time's going by fast. Listen, make sure that you are really saved. Not a church salvation. Not a denominational salvation. Not a baptism salvation. Not an experience salvation. But a blood salvation through Jesus Christ. All right? And that's something that all we can do is ask. Go back and read Revelation chapter 1 today. It's by the blood of the Lamb. Hebrews says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remissions of sin. There's no forgiveness. Guys, I'm telling you, water can't give you salvation. Eating a wafer can't give you salvation. Changing your life, it's a good thing, but it won't give you salvation. Does that make sense? Even going out and preaching the Word of God is not going to save you. What's going to save you is a Savior. His name is Jesus also known as the Christ. He's the one that paid your sin debt, shed his blood, rose again on the third day, and all you got to do is ask him to save you. But to do that, you got to realize you're a sinner. Let's do that. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, and the best I know how. I believe that Jesus, you are God, and that you went to the cross, died for my sins, paid my sin debt with your blood. And through your blood, I can have access to you if I just ask you. So here it is. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I confess that you are the Christ, that you're alive today. And the best I know how, I'm asking you, depending on you and you only, to save me right here right now and forever. Give me a home in heaven with you. Now allow your Holy Spirit, thank you for saving me. Allow your Holy Spirit to come into me and to prepare my mind to think right, my heart to love right, and my life to live right. That I might be an example that people say, I want the Jesus that changed you to change me. I want the Jesus that saved you to save me. So please, Help me to know how to pray. And here's the key. Just ask. Save me, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 You understand how important the book of Philippians is now? Hope to see you tonight at our church at 6. If not, we'll see you online at 6.15. Love you all. God bless you.